So this is a country that in one breath says it wants investors to build its country and economy. But this is another country that demolishes a pioneer in the hospitality sector. Prior to this time, that area was filth until Landbank bought it over and turned it around. All these years, the government did not deem it fit to do anything around there. Now you have a coastal road that the initial route has been contested that it was not even supposed to pass through that area and that you could have rerouted. But now you have something that is going on there that it's finally encroached into businesses around that route and they are being demolished. This is a business that pays billions in taxes. Cumulatively, other businesses, they also pay billions in taxes and the employment. So you've taken that out, you've taken the beachfront out, and you've currently gone in there to demolish. This is also a contract that is very nebulous. I keep asking, what's the rush about doing 47 kilometers of road for over a trillion? And you wonder, what was the tender competitive process? Although the minister came to say that it was only the company high tech that had real capacity to be able to do it and it was passed on by BP. Yes, I have the document here that it was passed on by BP. But the question is, is that the best possible solution? Couldn't we have had other people to reduce the cost of this 47 kilometers of road? Because initially, the project cost as requested was supposed to be one, bi one trillion, 100 billion, 771, 271, 87.01. That's one trillion, 101 billion. But the, the BP reviewed the contract cost to 1 trillion, 67 billion, uh, 887 million, 381,148 naira and 60 kobo only, inclusive of 7.5% VAT. The president approved the first phase of the project and the road courage shall be funded by the federal government. So at a time where we have other roads that need to be done in the country, yeah. we're spending just one trillion on 47 kilometers of road. And it's also hampering pre-existing business. Look at that wall that they are pulling down. Do you know how much that will have cost the people to be able to build that? This is also a contract, a project that a lot of people have asked about questions about the comprehensive environmental study that was done. It was just on September, I mean, on Saturday, April 20th, 2024, that the Federal Ministry of Work said they were going to have a Lagos Calabar Coastal Road Project Phase 1, you know, invitation letter for scoping workshop, for scoping workshop of ESI and RAP studies of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway. So people are asking about, okay, what's the comprehensive ESI has been done as regards the project? And there are myriads of many other questions at this project. So in one breath, President Tinubu has gone to Saudi Arabia. We're talking to Maersk to bring investment. But your local investment in the hospitality sector that have revamped that shoreline with over hundred million dollars in investment, we're taking it out. Couldn't we have made concessions on the road? A lot of people say, no, it's right of way and all of that. The minister said they've been lenient enough and all of this blackmail should stop in the media. What we're talking is, let it make, make it make sense. What's the priority here? Today, we don't even know the full cost because the minister here couldn't tell us the full cost of the project. If 47 kilometers of over 700 kilometers of road cost 1 trillion, and they're saying, okay, the anticipated cost with the breakdown section so far is about over 15 trillion or 15 billion dollars. Let's make it make sense. All right, I've made extensive video regarding this landmark project demolition the owner of Langmark beach has gone on the national television to speak about this particular project you saw dave umai coming to say that this project will be built and no structure of the landmark will be demolished that people businesses will not be affected yeah the coastal highway is a very good project it's going to boost the economy of the country and people are really really celebrating it but there's a, there's a lot there are a lot of shady dealings regarding this coastal highway from the people handling it the high-tech company shady dealings the budget the person that made the budget is shady dealings and the funding everything is so shady and then 
But what people are really not focusing on, the reason why people are complaining about the demolition of the Lama Beach is this. The picture you're seeing is the area bordering the Langmad Beach. Now the red line you see here, this is the original plan of the coastal highway. This is where the coastal highway was meant to pass through. Now the yellow line is the rerouting of the original plan. They rerouted it to affect and take off parts of the Lang Magby and that is what has been causing controversy. You also saw when the owner, the CEO of Lamabi came to the national television to say they should stick to the original plan. Now what we find said this beach was left desolate until someone decided to invest over 200 million dollars into this area and turn this place into one of the biggest and best tourist center in Africa. According to this man, he left his business in the UK to come to Nigeria to invest in this place and this is how the government is paying him the hasty initiation of this project the funding and everything shows two things it's either a winch hunt yes i am saying it on a political it's either a winch hunt because this man is an evil man or somebody has an eye on this particular plot of land remember the eco atlantic is also close to this um, area bordering the Lamari, and it is being speculated that the owner of the eco atlantic who is the same person that is handling this project might be eyeing this particular place to take off landmark bigs out of business so eco atlantic can have unhindered access eco atlantic will not have any competitors if not make it sense to me that a country that has the highest number of out of school children a country that has the highest number of poverty capital in the world a country that is fighting insecurity we are facing inflation our economy is in shambles tell me why they will go ahead to destroy a 200 million dollars investment an investment that is contributing over 1 billion naira to the lagos economy an investment that has employed over 4,000 workers, you are destroying that investment. What is so hasty about this business if there are no shady dealings regarding the business? It is a Lagos Calabar coastal way. Why not start from Calabar? Why not start building this coastal road from Calabar? At least it's going to take close to like seven years to complete this project. Within that period, you have given the owner of the Lama Bay another ample opportunity to seek for, a, for an, an, an alternative and apparently close down his business without incurring any losses but then remember this whole thing has is just within one month and they started demolition the owner of Lamadri has complained seriously how the people that are investing in his business has been calling him and they are terrified with the news this is Tinibu in Saudi Arabia. He has gone to woo investors to come to Nigeria. He has gone to tell investors to bring in their money into Nigeria and invest in the Nigerian economy. Now tell me, how are you going to convince an investor to come into your country and invest when someone had invested over $200 million has been left hanging? How are you going to convince an investor to come and invest in your country when you go about demolishing a business owned, a private business owned by someone that invested $200 million, someone that has contributed to the economy, has employed people, 4,000 persons? How do you convince them to come and invest? Just like me that Peter B said, investors are like bills. You don't go about looking for investors. They are like bees. Just do the right thing and they will come. Those of you celebrating this project, have you asked yourself a question? Yes, it's a very good project. But there's what we call scale of preference in order of priority. Is this really our priority? Just the other day, two days ago, in River State, over 50 cows were burnt and people died when a tanker exploded in LMA. The reason why it happened is because the roads those people were applying was bad and that is a federal road. East West Road is a federal road. It was bad and the people were trapped in traffic. They were trapped on that bad road and they could not escape with their cars when that incident happened and their cars were burnt and people's lives were lost. There are many uncompleted roads in Nigeria, dilapidated roads and that is what Mr. Peter B is saying. This money that you are using to build a coastal road that may take 30 years to complete could have been pumped into rehabilitating our existing road in Nigeria. 
fix our existing road in Nigeria, build new roads, smaller roads that will help businesses, help transport people across different parts of the country, help goods and services to reach other parts of the country. But no, you want to build a coastal road that may take 30 years to complete. A coastal road that is filled with shady links. How many of you can boast of steady power supply? How many of you can boast about that? Nigeria cannot even boast of five hours uninterrupted power supply. We can't boast of that. But yet we are building a 15 trillion coastal highway. Have you asked yourself if that 15 trillion is invested in the power sector? How is going to improve our power generation? If the power generation in this country is improved, how you, you that is listening to me, your productivity will improve. It will affect the life of everyone in this country and it will boost the economy beyond recognition. But yet, the government decided to go into a coastal way project that you, anybody that will ply that road will be taxed 3,000 Naira. And Nigerians are defending this on social media. Do we think at all? Do we have logical reasoning? This is a white elephant project. You have the Ajokuta stel that has gone maribond. This was the same thing they did. Going into a project without needs assessment. Going into the project without assessing how this project will be completed. Look at the Ajokuta stel. Here today we still import steel into the country, but that project is maribond. How much did Dangote use in building his refinery? How much did he use in building his, his refinery? Yet we keep crying about petroleum. There's fuel scarcity currently. People are suffering of fuel scarcity. Why not invest in critical infrastructure that will Im improve the life of the people? That will add to the life of the people. But yet you keep making the people to suffer. In a country over how many years of independence, we cannot boost of steady power supply. And you are going to build a coastal way. Nobody's even complaining about building a coastal way. But why was the rerouting done? Why destroying people's business? $200 million business has been destroyed because of a coastal road. And people are celebrating this. People are celebrating this. Because you think the person you voted into power is doing a project that you are going to count as an achievement ask yourself of what benefit is that to your life of what benefit is that to the ordinary nigerians who cannot who cannot who cannot afford three square meal of what benefit is that to the out of school children the other day in Kwara state a lady posted on a social media twitter how somebody was having an attack on the road for four hours there was no, absolutely no ambulance to attend to this man. This man died on that road. He died on the road. This is just what is being reported, what you've seen. Imagine the countless cases of people that have died because of lack of medical attention. Lack of medical attention. Ask yourself, if you should have any medical emergency now, who will come to your rescue? The hospital you are going, do they have the equipment to treat you? That is why you see religion is progressing, is flourishing in this country because it has become the opium of the masses. The people depend on God for what the government ought to provide for them. Our health sector is in comatose. People don't even go for checkup because they don't even have the money to go for checkup. People who have sicknesses, they cannot be diagnosed because there are no equipment to diagnose their sickness. I have somebody that is working in the National Hospital in Abuja there. She complained of how people are dying because of lack of manpower. Newborn babies are dying in their numbers because of lack of manpower. But yet you are investing in a white elephant project. A white elephant project that you that most of you you might even forget. You might even, in the next three years you will forget about this project. There are many maribond projects that the country has undertaken that has been left abandoned. But Nigeria, rather than holding the government accountable and ensuring that things are properly done, they will choose to turn it into politics. There are critical infrastructure that are 15 trillion naira. Do you know what that means? That is the budget of all the 36 state plus the FCC combined. Invest it into key infrastructure and see the economy of this country improve. 
invested in power. Give us light. Stable electricity, that is what we are asking. There are people who need this light to improve their productivity, but no, the government will choose to invest in a project that is filled with secrecy. The Minister of Budget and Planning, Atiku Bakudu, was a mass with so much corruption of helping Abacha to launder money. And it was said that how Abacha laundered money was true inflated contract. The man handling this project, Kibet Chogri, the owner of the high-tech company that won this project without any competitive bidding, the same man was indicted for helping Abacha to launder money. He paid some money to the Nigerian government. But these are the people that are close to Bola Metinibu and you think they are doing the right thing for you. Keep on celebrating mediocrity. Keep on clapping and hailing your oppressors. Continue. It is your life they are wasting. It is your life they are wasting. And this will never end until Nigerians decide that enough is enough. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.